Um, hello, I'm Chris Wedge, and I'm the director of Epic. It's a new animated movie from Blue Sky Studios. We made Ice Age and Rio, and um, the, this idea came from the notion that um, out in the forest, there is a uh, struggle happening between forces of life and decay and that um, it's, it's being led by leaf men. The good guys are leaf men and they're like little samurai that ride on hummingbirds and, and the bad guys ride on bats. It's an epic adventure uh, film that um, I've been thinking about for a long time. Well, oh, I, no, you know, I, I, um, it represents a lot of years of my creative effort. Um, and I, and it, it also a, a, a large collaboration with other people at Blue Sky and 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 um, and uh, collaborators that 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 um, originated it with me, Bill Joyce and, and Jim Hart, um, over ten years ago. So you know, I have to say it sums up the, um, what I've been thinking about uh, animation-wise, creatively. For, for the past, uh, you know, eight years or so. And um, I'm very happy with the way it looks. You know, if I had more time, it would look even better. <laughs> but I'm very, very satisfied with it. Well, the, the casting for animation is always a matter of finding a voice that fits with the character. Because uh, characters in animation are made of many things. Um, you know, they're written to be a certain way, but they're also designed to be a certain way, and then they, they move a certain way, and, and you want the voice to, to come in and join all that as one piece. And, and for me, I never want the voice to stand apart from the, from the character. I don't want to, to recognize the voice necessarily. Um, but you... you so, so I'm always looking for a voice that's expressive and that fits. So in the English version of this movie, we have a number of very, very talented actors. Um, um, Christoph Waltz is one of our voices, and Josh Hutcherson is one of our voices, Amanda Seyfried is one of our voices, Jason Sudeikis is one of our voices, all fantastic actors, and uh, Colin Farrell is one of them. And we also have brought in people that aren't always actors, but are performers and personalities. Um, um, Steven Tyler is one of the voices and uh, Beyonce Knowles is one of the voices and so all these people are chosen for what they sound like and um, you know what they're going to bring to the movie. You know there might be one or two voices in Epic that are me but not I don't have a character in Epic. Yes, Was well, it? you know, the, the notion that the Leafmen are out there came from Bill Joyce's book, uh, The Leafmen and the Brave Good Bugs, but the story is completely original, and the characters that surround the Leafmen are completely original. Um, what I wanted to do was take um, the Leafmen and make them into very believable, fun-to-watch action heroes. And so, um, you know, Samurai is where I went for the you know, the, the kind of disciplined honor and, you know, kind of military precision that, 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 um, that, that, that they have. And, and when we went, we looked at many, many different, um, you know, um, military styles, you know, throughout the ages. And we, and we, and we, and we it took a couple of years to, to come up with the look that they have. And so it's derived from samurai for sure, you can tell that. But they're also very athletic. They move like superheroes. They're so small that physics is different. Gravity's different. Um, the air is thicker. Um, you know, they can leap like the equivalent of 30 feet to us. And um, so they had to have a little bit of more flexibility than the samurai uniforms had. And so, you know, part of it comes from the, the aesthetic and part of it comes from the practicality of how they're gonna move. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it because I think that, the, that they look timeless in a way. They're meant to be out there um, 
we can't see them, but they're there. So I didn't think they necessarily had to look ancient. Well, I think there are aspects of the story that 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 might owe some of the just magic to to other inspirations and. There's a character in the, in the movie, Mary Catherine, who is the daughter of a man who believes this world exists and no one else believes him, including her. She gets pulled into the world, like Alice does through the rabbit hole, and she discovers that her father was right. And, and to get out of the world, she has to help save it. She has to engage in the struggle that everyone else is in. And so once we're in that world, it's not just all fighting. There's, there's a, there are many locations that we visit that give us the insight into, a glimpse into, into how this world works. And, you know, just like in Alice in Wonderland, you know, you go through from one scene to another and you meet other characters. That happens here. You know, when we designed Nimgalu, who is, is like a grand old sage in, in the forest, a caterpillar came to mind, uh, uh, mostly because of, of his size and, and how he looked. The leafmen are only about this tall, and this caterpillar is about this big. And I can't help it if there are, you know, um, uh, associations that you make with things that have come before, but I'll take uh, that comparison to Alice in Wonderland. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, I think that it's a good place for a, a mm. video game because um, there's a lot of, it's a fun world that we haven't seen before, mm. and, and there's a lot to explore, there's a lot to discover about it, but there's also, like, pretty intense gameplay potential in here because there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun, you know, that sounds great. big <laughs> action sequences where you're riding Hummers and, um, you know, you're leaping and falling, and I think there's great potential for a game there. If I knew anything about video games, I'd do this one. Yeah. <laughs> I think this. Yes. This is. I think this is a culmination of a lot of um, what I've learned over the years and, and the evolution technically and artistically of our studio, Blue Sky Studios. Um, you know, we've poured, I've poured everything I know into this one. Okay. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's as good as I can make it. Well, you know, I'd like people to feel as though it was made for everyone. And I've watched it with an audience, and I think everyone feels that way. I think the, uh, the adults understand some of the complex uh, character issues and they understand the fantasy because I think it uh, hopefully it looks different than things they've seen before and the kids understand the story and they and they understand the characters they ride right along I was you know look it has it's a big action adventure movie and the action adventure movies come with with you know loud sounds and sometimes scary guys but I, I watched the youngest people in, in an audience and probably you know four or five and yeah, there were moments when they were scared, but they stuck in with it, you know. It wasn't, and I didn't see anybody crawling in anybody's lap. It's, I, like, when I was a kid, I loved being scared. When I, when I was a kid, it was the Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz. I hid under a table when she came on TV. But I loved it. So that's the first thing I think about when I think of that movie. I think of the Wicked Witch. And, um, you know, if there are things about the movie that seem, um, uh, 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 um, new to kids, I think that, that, that you know, it'll fascinate them more. Well, I have, there are a couple of scenes that I think, um, you know, were, you know, accomplished what I wanted when, when we started. And it is, it's the action that I wanted to really make immersive and, and unusual. Um, and so there's a sequence early in the film where the Leafmen are ambushed and uh, it kind of gets the story started. And um, there are aspects to that that I think involve, 
you know, you know, our involvement with characters that we've gotten to know, um, action that's very visceral and engaging, and a setting that, that is surprising. It's a place that you wouldn't expect to see this kind of action take place, and we take advantage of, of all of it. So I think oh, that would be my favorite, but, you know, pretty fond of everything. Yes, the, the, well, the, you know, 3D is fairly straightforward with computers um, because everything is a simulation of a 3D world. And you just have, you have, I mean, the simplest way to think of it is you just make the other eye, you move it two and a half inches, and you make the other eye. But, but because it's all synthetic, what we're seeing, we have a great degree of control over how you experience the 3D. So sometimes we can, you know, we can take the corners of the, of the frame and, and push it back and it looks like a diorama. It looks like something happening beyond the screen. And sometimes we can pull those things out of the screen and it can feel like it's happening in, in, in front of you. So it's another degree of control we have where, you know, all the, all the, all the uh, parameters of cinematography before were, ended up as a 2D image, composition and lighting and depth of field. Now you can do, now you have this sensation that you can see around things and it just, um, it, 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 just it just gives you one more layer of, 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 of convincing immersion for, for me. The film works in both formats very well, but I think for this one, because the world is so uh, unique, that when you see it in 3D, you really feel like you're experiencing something new. You know, look, looking back on the film, there's all, there are always things you wish you could redo, but there aren't too many in this for me. I, I've really put everything I could into it, and, and um, I, I, think, yeah, I think you can see it in there. Do I, I don't feel pressure. I don't feel pressure. The pressure's over. Well, <laughs> there, you know, there's still things to do. I still have to mix it and finish it, and there's all of that. But, but um, you know, obviously most of the work is behind. And, you know, I feel more pressure when I when it's when it's coming up with ideas. I mean, just just like squeezing ideas out of your brain sometimes just takes um, effort and. That I feel I've done with. That's the pressure I feel. Well, I think that it kind of it, that if there's an ecological message, it just comes with the with the territory. It, it, it's not preachy in any way, and it's not a story about um, you know the forest and 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 humans coming with bulldozers or, you know, tearing down the rainforest or polluting the atmosphere. This is all, I wanted to tell a story where we went to a place that you, that you didn't expect to go to and that you see that that place is in danger. But I wanted, I always wanted it to be, um, to, to just be about the, the characters that lived there. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, we've seen that story before. I mean, the, I mean, Avatar is the best example of it. I loved that movie, and I, you know, I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to go and try to make that a different way. This is this is a different, a different story. So yes, we're fighting to keep the forest alive, but we're fighting against the guys that that, that are, are trying to just make it decay, and they're always out there. You know, you can walk in the woods and you can see evidence that this is happening. You know, the leafmen keep it alive, the boggins. That's why those trees are rotten, and that's why those leaves are dead. There's a character in the film called Bamba, who's a human being who, who thinks that, that, that the world exists and no one believes him, and there's his daughter, Mary Catherine. And she was always pulled into the world one way or another. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was really to, to create a character conflict more than anything, because, um, because we see this world with our own eyes. Um, you can say she's a, a, a point of view character, but she isn't really because we've already seen the world. She's just, she's pulled into it. I mean, Thumbelina is not a Hans Christian Andersen story. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't think I remember. I don't know if I've ever seen the Don Bluth movie. There isn't. Uh, look, I'll say this much. There isn't much in the world of animation that I used as an influence for this. Maybe um, some of the, I, you know, the the scope of uh, that that Miyazaki has explored mm -hmm. in his films. But for the most part, you know, this is an original story that we've tried to tell in a in a style that will feel more like a live action adventure movie to the audience than a cartoon. Mm 